Taylor. I'm Shaylee. I'm Nico. I'm Oscar. And I'm Gene. And today we're going to be talking about suicide prevention. So we realize that this topic can be sensitive for some, so if at any point you feel the need to step outside, you can go ahead and send one of us outside to check on you. We also have pre-surveys on your desk, so if you complete those throughout the presentation, we will explain it and help you throughout the process. Before our presentation today, we had everybody in the classroom answer this question anonymously. Do you know of someone who committed suicide? And we wanted to show you guys a couple of the answers because that way you know that there are definitely people in this classroom that have been affected by suicide. That being said, we really want you guys to take this topic seriously because you never know when this information could help you in your future. So by the end of this presentation, you will be able to explain the importance of suicide prevention education, be able to identify at least three risk factors of suicide, be able to identify at least three signs of depressive or suicidal behavior, be able to recall ways to approach a friend when risk factors of suicide or signs of depressive behavior are present, be able to identify mental health resources, and be able to explain why empathy is important and two ways you can be empathetic. So our presentation is going to have some graphs, statistics, some pictures. There will also be some videos that will help you better understand the, what we're trying to teach you. And if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask. It happens to be September, which is Suicide Prevention Month. We are bringing this topic to your high school classmates today because, as you can see in the statistics, it's the second leading cause of death in American high school students. Also. 41.4% reported sadness or hopelessness, and also 17.2% of high school students said they had suicidal thoughts. If you guys remember from your pre-survey, we asked how common is suicide? As you can see here, death by suicide is skyrocketing in your age range. Also from 10 to 24, number of deaths caused by suicide has increased by 24.8%. So it's important to understand what signs correlate to mental illness so that you can recognize these changes in yourself or someone else and then take the appropriate measures to prevent further progression. Someone who has a mental illness or who is developing a mental illness could show signs of prolonged sadness, feelings of extreme highs and lows, excessive worries and anxieties, social withdrawal, dramatic changes in eating or in sleeping habits, strange thoughts, inability to cope with daily problems, or substance use. Because someone feeling suicidal is not likely to seek help for themselves, knowing the warning signs of suicide can help you recognize them in somebody else so that you can help them get the help that they need. Signs that could indicate suicidal thoughts include depression, huge personality changes, self-harm behaviors, and speaking about wanting to die. Other common warning signs include sudden calmness after prolonged depression, withdrawing from people and social events, feelings of being very hopeless or being a constant burden, and attempts at getting personal affairs in order. As my friend Shaylee had mentioned, suicide warning signs, we also have suicide risk factors, which lead to the warning signs. So suicide risks include recent life crisis, money or legal problems, history of alcohol or drug abuse, history of physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, and family troubles. People who have one or more of these characteristics could be more at risk for suicide. 
So now that we have talked about the warning signs and risk factors of suicide, let's talk about some prevention. School counselors are a great starting point to express concerns to a neutral adult and they can provide further resources if needed. You can also talk to a school counselor if you are having feelings of hopelessness. Therapy. Therapy can be a source of long-term help from someone who is trained to help people with a mental illness or suicidal thoughts. Therapy can be beneficial for both the individual with mental illness and other family members. A mental health professional can suggest ways to cope and better understand your own or loved one's illness. So how'd you do on the test? I got a B. Literally failed it. 52%. Can't do anything right. Just a failure. I don't know what to do. Have you thought about talking to the school counselor, Mr. C? I mean, I've heard about it, but I didn't really think you could talk to him about things like that. Isn't he, like, to fix your school schedule? No, I've heard a lot of students go talk to them when they're having a rough time. We should go see. Pause. Encouraging a friend to talk to a school counselor can lead them in the right direction to getting help. School counselors are trained to work with students who are experiencing hardships and can help them get back on track. These conversations are confidential between the student and the counselor and provide a healthy way for the student to express their feelings or concerns to a trustworthy adult. Now let's resume. Maybe we should. Hey, Mr. C, do you have a moment? Yes, yes. What can I do for you? You know, Mr. C, like, I just feel like I can't do anything right. Like, failing my classes. Like, ever since my parents got a divorce, I'm like, I don't know whose side to pick. They're trying to make me live with one and not live with the other. I feel like I can't do anything right. And I just don't want to do this or be here. And the world would be better without me. No, don't, don't say that. Like, thank you for coming to me first. I know, like, this is a very sensitive topic, but, like, coming, reaching out is the first step. Now let's let's uh, dive deeper into this. Like, when did this first this first start happening to you? Probably like a month ago. Nico will now be presenting on Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Suicide Prevention Lifeline, one of the most important and commonly known ways to reach out is the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which is 1-800-273-TALK. Conversations are with a skilled, trained counselor and are free and confidential and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Another way to prevent suicide is by helping others. The best way you can help prevent suicide is to learn the risk factors, be alert to signs of depression and other mental health conditions, recognize suicide warning signs, provide caring support, and ask directly if the person has considered hurting themselves. Being empathetic by truly listening to someone talk about their feelings and trying to understand what they may be going through can be a reminder that someone cares about them. Hey Taylor, is everything okay? You've been, you seem a bit sad and you're a bit, you're pretty distant from us lately. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I've just been really depressed I guess lately mm -hmm. um, my grandma died yesterday oh I'm sorry like my mom's crying and like when she cries like, it makes me want to cry and I just pause if you know someone who seems depressed and having trouble with life do not hesitate to talk to them even if you are scared it would make things worse hear them out speak with them and show that they are not alone in this empathy is showing that you understand and share your feelings with them now, it may look like it would not make a change, but can actually make the difference between life and death. Now, let's resume. <sighs> Just, I don't know what to do. I'm sad. Well, we're always here for you if you want to talk to us, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. If you feel that the person is in immediate danger, don't leave them alone. Remove objects that can be used in a suicide attempt if you can. Stay calm. Encourage them to call or call together. Support services like the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, call 911, or take them to the emergency room if possible. Another way to prevent suicide is communicating your needs with your parents or caretakers. 
This can teach them how to emotionally care for you and also let them know what you need to feel appreciated. People who receive support from caring friends and family and also have access to mental health services are less likely to act on their suicidal impulses than those who are isolated from support. Establishing self-efficacy is also another way to help prevent suicide. Self-efficacy is your belief in yourself to succeed. Ways to improve this is focusing on your successes, setting challenging yet obtainable short-term goals, and most importantly, looking at your mistakes as learning opportunities. Assessing self-efficacy can help identify a potential risk of developing suicidal behaviors. This can provide awareness that will allow you to identify triggers in your life that are potentially harmful to your self-belief. Improved self-efficacy has been found to be positively influenced by family support. Individuals that receive more familial support are better prepared to overcome stressful situations, which increases their self-efficacy over time. As would be expected, these individuals are much less likely to have suicidal thoughts. Having good self-efficacy decreases one's stress, anxiety, and depression, Moreover, reducing the prevalence of risk factors for suicide. Hey mom. What's up Eugene? I don't think I can do this. I'm just struggling in class. Oh no, you know- Pause. Letting your parents know when you are struggling or facing problems either inside or outside can show them that you may need extra reassurance or need to talk about your feelings in order to successfully overcome a stressful situation. Eugene told his mom that he was struggling in school and opened up about his feelings which provided his mom with a way to help encourage her son and remind him of his abilities and positive traits. Now let's resume. Honey, you're so smart, you are so intelligent, and you can do this. You just have to focus on setting short-term goals and make sure that if you don't do great on a test, you treat it as a learning experience. You got this, honey. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. All right, so lastly, before we leave, we have a little interactive quiz to just recap on the knowledge we went over today. So can someone tell me the percentage of high school students that have considered suicide in the last year? Yes. 17.2%. Perfect. Great memory. Next, can anyone give an example of how you can show empathy to someone? Go ahead. Active listening. Great. Yes. Checking in on someone. Yes. And also just being kind and being a good person and being there for someone. Um, can someone suggest where you can go if you're having feelings of loneliness or hopelessness. Um, a school counselor. Great. Anyone else? Suicide hotline. Yes. And you can also go to a trusted teacher or a parent if you feel comfortable. Lastly, can someone give an example of what changes you could recognize in someone else who might be feeling suicidal? Um, if they're not doing good in school. Perfect. Or if they're harming themselves. Yes. Also, statements about ending their life or feeling worthless or the world better be, being better off if they are not in it. All right, so here's a scenario to check your knowledge. You're having lunch with your two friends, Sarah and Mark. Sarah is excited about the new movie that's coming out. Mark smiles whenever a joke is told but does not contribute to the conversation and just seems distant. He has been this way for the past few months since moving in with his uncle after his father unexpectedly passed away in an automobile collision. You've noticed him becoming more anxious during this time. During your lunch, Mark mentions that he feels like a burden and wonders if anyone would care if he went away. Sarah laughs it off and calls him silly for saying something like that. Mark does not bring it up for the rest of the lunch. So can anyone tell me any risk factors or warning signs? Um, his father passing away. Okay, and any warning signs? Um, him feeling anxious and saying that he feels like a burden. All right, him. perfect. If you could, how would you approach your friend? Um, I would ask him if he's ever thought about harming himself. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So your teacher is passing around the, another survey. You'll notice that the questions are identical to the questions in the first survey. 
Uh, this is so that we can see if uh, your, your answers have changed and if you've learned anything new. There's also a spot at the very end where you can provide us feedback for what you think we did well and what you think you can improve upon. So lastly, before we head out, uh, this is your chance to ask any questions or if you would like to talk one-on-one, -on -one, we are more than welcome to speak with you afterwards. If not, thank you for your time and you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.